Before I begin my recitation, I want to remind you of that old Western song whose lyrics go, Oh Lord, it's so hard to be humble. <laughs> the problem that set me off was a very interesting problem. It's called radar range SIP recognition. You have a radar set, and it sees a ship, and the radar waves get reflected back. And what happens is you see a profile of the ship, and you see peaks in it. Now, the peaks correspond to reflecting surfaces, such as turrets, uh, superstructures, and so on. So the data consisted of these curves with different bumps in them. All right. Now, the problem with this damn stuff was that, depending on the angle from the ship, you could see different number of bumps. If the radar was broadside, you only saw one big bump, basically. If the radar was shooting at it along the length of the ship, you would see many bumps. Okay, so we had a training set, and the interest was to find out from these profiles what kind of ship it was. Especially this was Cold War time. Was it a Russian ship? Is it a battle? Is it a super tanker? And so on. All right, so we had a training set that had been constructed by airplanes flying around five ship types in San Diego. So we had a number of profiles at different angles of the five ship types. Now, one thing I learned in my consulting, which I'm sure, since you're at a CART conference, is so important, is you have to get to know your data. If you don't know your data, if you don't know what its fallacies are, what its problems are, what its information is, you're sunk. So what I did is I just took my consulting office and pasted all of these ship profiles up on the wall. My entire walls were covered with ship profiles. People would come along and kid me for this. And for weeks, but you see, the data was, was unorthodox data in the sense that for the same ship, if you just looked at the bumps, it was non-constant dimensionality. So you had to deal with very, in those days, strange non-constant dimensionality data. One thing I did realize after a while were that if the ship had a bump, that is, the bumps persisted at the same length proportional to the length of a ship. That is, for instance, if you got a reflection from a turret that was one-third down the length of the ship, and as long as that turret reflected, it would be one-third down the length of the ship. Okay, so... I don't know how this happened, but I mulled over this problem and thought about it for many weeks. And finally, a bolt from the blue hit me. And it said, this is what you do. You manufacture up a whole list of questions. Each question is of the form, for instance, do you have a bump in the interval 0.30 to 0.33? And then you vary both the width and the position of the bump along the ship. And then there could also be a bivariate question. Do you have a bump in 0 0.17, 0 0.20, and a bump in, say, 0 0.8, 0 0.85? So I had many hundreds, maybe thousands of questions, and I said, the thing we're going to do, each profile can answer this question yes or no. We've dispersed the curse of variable dimensionality because we're going to get a yes-no answer. Now we take and we put all of these profiles down this list of questions. Some will go left if they answer yes. Some will go right if they answer no. And then, because I had done a lot of research in information theory as a probabilist, I used the entropy measure to decide what split was best. And then I just recursed this, going down the nodes and use some arbitrary stopping rule, like stop when there are fewer than 10 profiles in every node. This was the first tree I ever grew. I don't know to this day what gave me that idea.